Imagine walking down the hallway of a brand new school and not knowing a single person. Many of you have probably experienced this at some point in your life, maybe even a few months ago at the beginning of this school year. It is not a great feeling. Now, imagine walking down the hallway of a brand new school where you do not know anyone, but this time you just got out of the hospital and you have a feeding tube coming out of your nose. Most of you have probably not experienced this, but it was the reality for my friend, Rebecca Taylor, and knowing her has transformed me as a person. At the beginning of my second grade school year at Leon Springs Elementary, my mom came up to me one day and said, we're going to meet a girl, a girl at the hospital and she will be your friend. To say the least, seven-year-old me was very confused by this. Why was I being forced to become friends with someone? And why was she in the hospital? If I'm honest, I do not think I wanted to meet this girl or make a new friend, especially if I had to go to the hospital to do so. My mom and my teacher, Mrs. Whitnaben, took it upon themselves to volunteer me to become friends with Rebecca, who is going to be a new student in my class. Despite my confusion and opposition, my mom and I made our way downtown to the hospital. I do not remember much about meeting Rebecca and her family for the first time, but it is safe to say that we probably talked about our obsession with American Girl Dolls or made some sort of craft, as that is what we spent much of our childhood doing. After my mom and I left that day, I learned that Rebecca had pancreatitis. In her case, it was caused by an underlying autoimmune disease that would later cause many other life-threatening health issues. Unfortunately, there was, and still is, no cure or easy treatment for this disease. Looking back, I believe that the day I met Rebecca at the hospital was a turning point in my life. Like I said before, I did not want to be friends with this girl that I was being forced to meet. I believe that I subconsciously assumed that there was something wrong with her because she was in the hospital, and therefore, I should not be friends with her. As terrible as that sounds, so many people make these assumptions all the time. It does not have to be specifically towards someone who has a disease or is in the hospital, but people tend to do this with others who seem different than themselves. After meeting and getting to know Rebecca, however, I learned that I should not have made this assumption, and I should never make such an assumption about anyone. I should never judge someone by their outward appearance. Some days, Rebecca looks absolutely normal and healthy. You would never know anything was wrong with her. Other days, however, she has a feeding tube, which makes her seem less normal. No matter what she may look like from the outside on any given day, her inner self is the same, and her story is the same. She is always the same. And this goes for everyone, not just Rebecca. You never know a person's story just by looking at them, and everyone deserves a chance. So, after meeting Rebecca and coming to this realization, I hoped to be a familiar face to her when she was at school and a friend to her during her long hospital stays. During the time she was out of the hospital, she came to school every moment that she possibly could. I have never known anyone to love school as much as Rebecca does. When she was able to come, not everything was normal, of course, but she learned to adapt to her situation. She could not participate in PE or recess, so me being the good friend that I was, but also mostly wanting to get out of the activities myself, quickly volunteered to stay with her during those times of the day. While everyone else was at PE or recess, I stayed with Rebecca, and we organized the books in our classroom every day. Some days, we sorted the bookcase alphabetically by author. Other days, we decided to go alphabetically by title, and if we were really feeling it, we sorted them by color. I'm not sure if any other second graders would give up their free time to sort books, but of course, Rebecca and I did, and I might add that the bookcase always looked very nice because of us. The days that Rebecca would have to spend in the hospital often turned into weeks, and even the weeks turned into months, and they were not easy times by any means. Because her hospital stays brought about so many unknowns, it was not only difficult for her, but also for her family and friends, myself included. I discovered that the only way to feel any comfort in the situation was to have faith that God was in control. It was far too complicated for doctors or experts to handle on their own. Rebecca's journey has greatly strengthened my own faith as I started finding myself turning to the Lord more and more, not only when things were not going well, but also when they were. Similarly, 
seeing Rebecca's own unconditional faith in all aspects of her journey helped me too. If she can have faith and trust that everything is going to be okay, then so can I. Rebecca is a living miracle, and I know that she is here today because of something greater than us, and that is God. I can say that because of Rebecca, my faith is so much stronger than it would be if I had not met her. While in the hospital, Rebecca was frequently having procedures and surgeries in an attempt to fix the problems, at least temporarily or until doctors really understood what the problems were. When we were in sixth grade, Rebecca became eligible for a five organ transplant at the University of Minnesota. She was one of the first children ever she was one of the first children ever to have this transplant and the very first from Texas. The 22 hour long transplant involved removing her pancreas and four other organs. The transplant cured her pancreatitis because she no longer had a pancreas, but it did not come without its own complications. Following the transplant, she had to stay in the hospital for about six months. It was a long recovery, but the hardship brought opportunity. Because of the transplant, Rebecca was offered a wish from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. They told her she could go anywhere, do anything, or meet anyone that she wanted to, but she did not want any of that. Instead, her wish was to start an organization for children with pancreatitis. She wanted to help others like her so that they would not have to go through the same thing she had gone through. So, the organization called Rebecca's Wish was born. The mission of Rebecca's Wish is to provide help and hope for children suffering from pancreatitis through supportive patient care, charitable services, and medical research. And they are doing just that. So many children are being helped and so many people are being educated about the disease. By starting this organization, Rebecca is affecting so many people for the better, even though her own journey has been unimaginably difficult. It is a true sign of her character. Rebecca is capable of seeing the good in every situation and turning struggles into something worthwhile. Because I volunteer with Rebecca's Wish, I have gotten to hear about and meet many of the children that the organization has impacted, and it has been life-changing. I am constantly reminded of how truly blessed I am and what can happen when bad situations are turned into something good. Now, I try every day to live out the things that I have learned. When I am faced with adversity, instead of complaining, I take a more positive approach. I try to think of good things that can come out of every situation. I will always be grateful to my mom and Mrs. Whitnaven for forcing my friendship with Rebecca. I am blessed that she has not only become a lifelong friend, but also as someone who has changed my life. As I have been a small part of her journey over the past 10 years, I have learned so much from her, and I think all of you can too. Because of her, I believe that I am more accepting of others. I have learned that someone's outward appearance does not define who they are as a person. Because of her, I am stronger in my faith. I know that when things seem out of control, there can be one constant by trusting in God. And lastly, because of her, I seek to see the good in every situation. Rebecca can overlook all of her own pain and find the good in everything. And this is especially apparent through Rebecca's wish. Rebecca has been an unexpected miracle in my life. While not all of you know her, you can still learn from her story. And I encourage you to do so. Thank you. She's in the hospital right now, right? Do you, do you think she's actually watching right now? As we, is, she, is she watching right now? Why, why don't you come up here and so, let's say hi to her. Welcome, welcome. All right, so uh, that, that's, that's uh, the, the camera to look into. And, and on the count of three, we're going to say hi, Rebecca. Is that cool? Is that good? Okay, one, two, three. Hi, hi Rebecca. Rebecca. And if you, if you would indulge me as a priest real quick, let, let's pray for Rebecca real quick. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lord God, we thank you so much for the inspiration of Rebecca's life. We thank you that you have strengthened her and sustained her through all these years. We pray that you would continue to be with her on the journey to wholeness, on the journey to health, that you would fill her with your healing light from the top of her head to the tip of her toes. We pray right now for her medical staff, that you would give them wisdom and skill to help her heal. And we pray for the Rebecca's Wish Foundation, that you would use that mightily to help other people in need. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.